Yes, uh, a real pleasure to be with you all tonight. Uh, I will be giving most of my lecture in, well, most, uh, a fair part of my lecture in French. I'll, be try to, I'll try to uh, follow up on the uh, most interesting ideas in English so that everyone can follow. Um, I'd like to salute Orest, Orest Sachuk. Uh, when I decided to go into architecture, when I was uh, wondering whether I should uh, take that decision, I was still at Laurentian University. Uh, I visited your office, and uh, you're the one that conned me into architecture. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I think it was the, the beauty of some of your drawings that uh, convinced me that uh, I'd like to uh, pursue in, in that orientation. Thank you. Um, well, there's a few other architects here that I met through the years that I'm happy to, to have saluted even if it was very briefly. So, uh, tonight, uh, tonight uh, I'm here to, to speak about a practice, mais je suis ici aussi de, pour essayer de, de tracer un peu uh, mon parcours. C'est un peu fort, hein, le, le microphone. Is it possible to turn this down a bit? No? Um, all right, I'll try to get you... Ah, thank you, that's better. Um, Um, or I'm getting used to it. Uh, so, uh, I'm here to... Uh, je, je voudrais tracer un peu le parcours uh, de d'Affleck de la Riva à Montréal. Et uh, l'architecture, uh, pour nous, on, je peux vous le présenter sous ce format-ci, uh, grand, petit, ancien, nouveau, parce que notre pratique est assez diversifiée. Um, mais... Euh, C'est euh, une façon un peu euh, naïve de présenter la pratique, somme toute, bien que la catégorisation de notre pratique comme ça euh, se présente assez bien. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, categories are interesting, but uh, categories mix, and in practice, we deal with various scales of project. We deal with matter, time, and progression. We deal with history. And it's perhaps, being from Sudbury, and my fascination with history and the making of the project, uh, from the uh, origins of geology to the uh, progress of civilization through construction, that, that I would say brings all of this together. So uh, perhaps the spiral is, is something that brings to together more closely uh, what architectural practice is, is all about than a, uh, the categorization of projects through, through different types. Um, the painter Gauguin had asked a very interesting question. Where are we from? What, who are we? And where are we heading? Gauguin, d'où venons-nous? Que sommes-nous? Où allons-nous? Donc, on parle d'identité. Et lorsqu'on qu crée, qu'on développe le projet d'architecture, c'est finalement l'identité qu'on cherche. La, la, la spirale d'un devenir, l'évocation du temps, de la progression, de l'histoire, de la vie en devenir. What, what we have here are categories uh, that break up the stages of architecture in a process of different, different uh, stages, différentes étapes dans la progression du projet. Uh, le projet qui doit être uh, conçu, uh, concilié, uh, et l'évolution du projet uh, se faisant par étapes. La réalité de tout ça, c'est que le projet, c'est plus complexe. Et uh, c'est le, le, le fond du message que je cherche à vous communiquer à travers ce, ce graphisme-là. Mais néanmoins, il faut uh, uh, présenter le projet. So let's start small. And my, my trick question here is, is it true that all small projects start small? Tous les petits projets doivent-ils débuter petits? So, uh, the Slate House, la maison d'ardoise, the Slate itself talks about craftsmanship, coming together on, on materials, coming together in the making of the project. Uh, L'ardoise aussi, ça, ça renvoie au lieu, ça renvoie au paysage dans son sens le plus large. Cette maison-ci, c'est une maison dans la banlieue nord de l'île de Laval, dans un endroit où la nature est encore assez présente. 
C'est la façade publique de l'immeuble face à la rue. Mais dans les fêtes, la maison s'insère dans un restant de terrain au cœur de Nilo qui s'est fait développer de forme irrégulière avec le tracé d'un ruisseau. So this remnant piece of land was, was, uh, was brought to our attention by, by the client, obviously, and, and, and uh, was quite, quite a surprise and permitted a project that had a, a bit of, a, of its own story. And uh, the project is for a, a, a bachelor that loves to receive people and uh, receive family. So the, the basement is almost conceived as an independent unit, a duplex, and uh, with a large garage because the collection, uh, the, the, the working on collection cars is his pastime. And this, this, what was aimed for was a house that dealt with land in all its simplicity. In the back side of the house. Um, what's particular about this house is the idea of that continuity between the inside and the outside. The roof overhang on the back side of the house uh, is meant to prolong physically uh, the interior space onto the outside. So what we have here is a house that opens up on a lateral yard. La, la pièce extérieure qui fait partie de, de la maison, la salle de bain. So I'm just slightly destabilized because that's my before last slide version. So there's just a couple of slides missing there, but it's okay. It's pretty good. <laughs> so the uh, slate that we have on the outside also finds its way inside. L'ardoise se prolonge de l'intérieur. Uh, de uh, l'utilisation en bardeau à l'extérieur, uh, au plancher intérieur, le jeu de la lumière, du pergola sur l'ardoise, une maison en toute simplicité. Which, which brings us to an earlier house, the Minton Hill House, dans l'Estrie. Uh, on doit traverser une érablière pour arriver à cette maison-là. Et cette maison-là aussi se veut uh, très proche du paysage. Alors, le site est ici, en haut de la colline, avec la vue sur le lac Massawipi. Alors, la vue sur une vingtaine de, de kilomètres de longueur vers les États-Unis. C'est un lieu vraiment exceptionnel. It's one of those magical sites that you chance on, not too often in your career, your architect's career. The, the view towards overlooking the village and towards Massawipi Lake is, is just incredible. So it's, it's very powerful. So the idea was to try to develop strategies that would not spoil the view and deal with the client's program, uh, where a separate room for a for piano and for, for guests was asked. Donc c'est une maison toute simple. On voit ici la, la, la section. Et, uh, L'effet de jour, où en arrivant, on, on voit le lac sur toute la longueur. Donc, c'est une maison qui fait bien vivre. Uh, I was talking to Terry, and I guess in all of our projects, it's important to find areas where we can be generous as, as architects. Generous. And where it's easiest to be generous is to give space, to create space, to give space. The space of the internal courtyard, the space of this, this view towards the lake that you uh, uh, are invited to, to take every day, uh, uh, being forced to experience nature when you walk from one part of the house to the other, a bit like you will find in a traditional Japanese architecture. So the house is a very simple, but also very nimble. Which brings us to the discussion <coughs> on renewal. Renewal from new architecture to renewal. The 
This project here was a project that launched my, my architectural career in 1991. It won a uh, Canadian competition, an open competition on uh, housing, where uh, different typologies had been uh, proposed and different sites in Montreal for on different themes. And uh, we, I was supposed to address the issue of um, affordable housing for families. And this project is probably the oldest uh, project that I'm showing to you tonight, but it's really marked my career. It's quite didactic, in fact. Um, the main facade itself is reminiscent of the traditional Montreal maisonette with its exterior stairs and dormers and uh, steel sheet roofs. Uh, the rear facade is about something else. La facade arrière nous renvoie à la modernité, ou plutôt les expériences de la modernité au début du siècle en Europe alors qu'on découvrait euh, le jardin, les toits terrasses, euh, les grandes expériences en Allemagne et euh, l'architecture d'Adolf Loos que, que j'aimais beaucoup. Alors ce projet-ci se propose, proposait euh, un développement en, en deux temps d'un projet qui se réconciliait dans la façade latérale qui se voulait euh, quelque peu euh, anthropomorphique. Alors, it talks about human body, it talks about traditional architecture uh, that is thought about in a more minimalist in way, coming together with modernity on the back facade. And uh, the project met a lot of success, won many prizes, and launched my architectural career. Uh, in a way, with this project, it's like walking in a casino and uh, uh, winning uh, the big lottery on your first machine. So. Uh, when I won this competition and got this, pri this project built, uh, I thought architecture would be easy, but no. <laughs> so, uh, so if you do win, when you go into a casino for the first time, don't think it's easy. Mm. So all these themes or themes are something that I, that I developed in my practice. However, uh, last few years, this is where our experiences in multifamily housing have led us. Ceci aussi est, est une façade de, de boulevard, tout comme l'autre. Hein? C'est une façade qui parle de la ville, mais qui parle d'un contexte urbain euh, très différent de celui que vous avez vu antérieurement, qui était euh, un voisinage traditionnel. Ici, euh, on est dans le nord de la ville, on est dans un endroit déconstruit. C'est du logement euh, locatif abordable. It's uh, affordable housing, rental. But it's in a part of town that someone deconstructed. So in this neighborhood here, uh, the lot lines are all north-south, or the Montreal north-south. However, we have this road that's on angles. And as you drive along the boulevard, uh, people don't know how to build. They don't know whether they should build parallel to the street or uh, parallel to the uh, lot lines, dominating lot lines. And there's quite an array of materials and colors. So that's why we wanted to develop a project that was so powerful, that addressed at the time both the, uh, the boulevard and the uh, inner cell that is each room. So we, we play with the plan like a, a stair. And it created this incredibly monumentous uh, facade and uh, beautiful housing units. Uh, in a similar way as the previous project, we, we give balconies to everyone on the rear facade. In the previous project, we tried to give both a, either a terrace or a, a courtyard for every unit. But I didn't want to elaborate too much on this because we're, I I'm, I'm guess I'm going through uh, the ideas that generated my perhaps more recent architecture maybe suffice to say that there's a lot of interesting brickwork here that, that was quite the experience. Puis un autre aspect que j'aime beaucoup de ce projet-là, c'est que lorsqu'on se promène sur le boulevard, qu'on l'approche de ce côté-ci, le projet est de briques rouges, alors que si on l'approche de la direction contraire, c'est la brique anthracite qui domine, ce qui fait que ça aide à nous situer dans la ville. So this is a side slide I had edited out. But nevertheless, I just left it there to say that uh, our um, 
I had planned it initially to say that a certain research in structure is something that's quite fascinating, architectural gesture. So I guess our practice devolved from these didactic ideas and come to terms with history into something that's more about architectural gesture and, and taking on also the creation of space in a more dynamic and, uh, or aggressive way. Alors nos idées ont évolué un peu là-dessus. Peut-être on est plus à l'aise avec l'histoire. Donc on, on essaie de, 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 de créer des espaces intérieurs qui sont plus invitants. C'est ce qu'on retrouve ici aussi avec la, le plafond de la pépinière municipale de Montréal euh, à l'Assomption, la création d'une structure singulière euh, très travaillée qui, qui donne une belle identité à, à cette cafétéria. So how do we give identity to creative spaces for this tree farm? And uh, the way we develop these mandates is often uh, establishing links with clients that ask us to, to study their properties, to study the different buildings and farms and helping them put together a program and eventually, well, we, we pick up a project or a part of the project. Those ideas also is what helped us develop uh, a master plan for the city of Côte St. Luke for a new sports center. Uh, while trying to integrate their exterior pool, uh, finally we landed the uh, uh, first phase, uh, the construction of a gymnasium and changing rooms, where we finally got to, uh, to, to apply these ideas on uh, wood construction. Working with indirect lighting, alors plusieurs stratégies, indirect lighting, natural material, uh, trying to open up exterior envelope to, to different views. C'est toutes des choses qu'on prend pour acquis. Hein? We take that for granted, but good architecture is often uh, builds upon very basic, simple notions. So, comment peut-on être généreux avec les usagers? Um, dans un concours plus récent, Euh, celui du complexe de soccer Saint-Michel, c'est toutes des idées qu'on a essayé de développer. This was an open phase, an open competition that for which we were we qualified and we were paid to to develop a proposal, the Saint-Michel soccer complex. Uh, we didn't win the competition, unfortunately, but it's it's quite a proposal where a lot of these ideas came to maturity. L'utilisation du bois, forme expressive. Euh, aborder, euh, parler du paysage, hein? la toiture elle-même comme un élément flottant sur euh, un trou, un grand trou, le, le terrain principal de soccer intérieur, parce que c'est un interior soccer center, being sunken in slightly into the ground, dealing with this, this program as an amphitheater, uh, dealing with the circulations, and seeing this project as part of the landscape. I guess what I didn't say is that the Saint Michel, what is here is actually a big quarry that was partially filled in on the north side of the um, uh, Saint Michel Circus Center. So it's about excavation, it's about the natural beauty, it's in the park, and it's about the experience of a, a new amphitheater, an amphitheater dedicated to sport. Le foot, les élévations. Le projet est très dynamique. Hein? Alors, quand je parlais de, de, de l'importance du geste en architecture, je pense que, que ce projet-ci traite de l'histoire du lieu, il traite du territoire, il traite du terrain dans toute sa profondeur géologique, si vous voulez, de la roche, mais avec un geste qui est très fort, très puissant. And this was our proposal. Le projet euh, vraiment une identité euh, très forte euh, dans l'horizontalité de, de ce terrain-là. Il y a plein de, 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 de préceptes euh, lead or environnementaux qui étaient euh, intégrés euh, à l'importance de l'ombre propagée par la toiture, la toiture qui, qui devient pergola hein, dans, dans son, son développement. Mais aussi euh, le mur trombe, euh, l'accumulation de chaleur, la circulation de l'air, la ventilation transversale, euh, chauffage par infrarouge. Il y a plein, plein de, de principes écologiques qui avaient été intégrés dans la proposition. Puis on essaie d'intégrer ces principes-là de plus en plus euh, dans notre travail. 
mais plus loin encore, c'était l'idée de, de traiter euh, l'amphithéâtre intérieur euh, de gazon artificiel, mais de, de façon littérale et de, de ramener ça à l'intérieur. Alors, l'expérience de l'arrivée. And the interior field with its astroturf green. Beautiful proposal, and hopefully we'll get a, another chance to, to build something like that on another competition. <laughs> Which brings us to the contrast, the contrast of, of old monuments, of old architecture, but also that addresses us with our concern with uh, preserving modernity. In Montreal, we have to deal with the uh, restoration of modern monuments also, which is, is quite a challenge. The way we developed uh, architect or architectural practice in Montreal, uh, when we were facing the competition, <laughs> Uh, it's very competitive, eh? uh, so uh, uh, dealing with historical monuments was certainly an area where we were uh, highly qualified to take the time to think, to produce reports, to study uh, carefully old buildings. It was something we, we, do, uh, we did a lot and we still do a lot, and that's what helped develop our expertise in, in restoration. Alors, alors, ce que je disais, c'est que vraiment, ça a été pour nous une, une stratégie de survie, mais qui rejoignait nos, notre intérêt profond euh, dans, dans le bâtiment ancien et dans l'histoire. Et euh, c'est ce qu'on fait de bien, c'est de prendre le temps d'étudier les choses, d'étudier les bâtiments, mais de regarder leur histoire et d'essayer de les comprendre. You have to uh, study carefully buildings to understand their past in order to be able to treat them. So we were talking earlier, Terry, about the medical doctor or the uh, occupational therapist. The more you know about a person, the better you could treat a person. And same thing goes with, with old buildings. You have to know where they're from to understand a bit better where they're heading. Ça ici, c'était un ancien couvent. Un couvent d'enseignement pour les petites filles dans un petit village, le village de Saint-Roch de la Chigan. Le bâtiment avait été abandonné. En fait, Lorsque l'école a fermé, ça a été converti en centre pour personnes âgées pendant quelques années. C'est devenu un centre de désintoxication et le bâtiment avait été abandonné. Abandoned for many years, unheated. Uh, water in the basement. It was, uh, the windows were all boarded up. On the main intersection of the village. So uh, it was a ghastly presence and the uh, city council of that small village decided to pick up the building and asked us if we could uh, work it into a, a community center and uh, restore it. And the project coûte cher. These types of projects are expensive because of contemporary norms and regulations and elevators and accessibility universelle. Uh, so it finally it became, uh, it became clear that if we were going to do this project, it had to become a bit more. So it became the uh, new uh, city hall of that little village. So uh, we redid the, uh, all of the main roof of the uh, principal building in copper, you know, from half lost asphalt shingle to, to copper, uh, reconstituted a lot of the details that had been lost through the years through the study of historical photos. And some original drawings were very little, very schematic, uh, eliminated a lot of the uh, post and stuff to reconstitute the original woodwork based on what we had found in the documents. Alors, vraiment un gros travail de reconstitution afin de redonner au bâtiment d'origine son, son intégrité, sa présence dans le village. Et, finalement, d'intervenir en arrière avec la, la nouvelle identité de l'immeuble, celle qui parle d'accessibilité universelle, mais qui, qui parle d'accessibilité universelle pour les gens dans un village. So this is the new entrance that talks about today and the new functions that permits easy access to all of the levels. The community center, unfortunately, is, is, well, is, is restricted to the basement, but the city uh, uses all three floors of the small convent. Uh, some of the functions of the main floor being open to the public on a regular basis. Alors, on voit ici l'ancienne chapelle, the old chapel, which is now the council room, serves also for special events, special exhibits. And it, was a, it was a real mess, eh? the plaster had to be totally reworked, the lighting, everything. 
And this is another project in that same vein, Victoria School, L'Ecole Victoria. It's the oldest remaining school in downtown Montreal of the past, and the building had also been abandoned for many years, had been converted to different uses. So uh, this school uh, was picked up by the Commission Scolaire de Montréal, and the project became uh, converted into a cooking school. Uh, but first we had to stabilize the building, and uh, from the, we had to develop a project for the new roofs, and a, and a project for the rest of the school, but based a lot on the photos, because we didn't have any documentation. And uh, the project was devised. In that project, we wanted to uh, create a schoolyard, even if the lot was tight. So we, on a, on a dégagé, on a dégagé, we opened up. And we, uh, pour favoriser le mouvement transversal par la cour intérieure, l'accès par la ruelle, et la circulation principale entre les trois bâtiments. Euh, L'ancien gymnase a été converti dans les cuisines. The cooking and all of the operations and food preparation is done now in the old gym. So uh, the, the cooks are quite happy, and the students and teachers are very happy. They have a lot of ceiling room. And uh, the uh, main space, the main room here at the back, or the public can access directly from the main stair uh, to the dining room, and the students can receive people from the outside. So it's a, it's a vocational school, une école qui, qui concentre sur la préparation de la nourriture, mais sur toutes les activités liées au tourisme. The work of art that was integrated into the uh, public area. Au Québec, hein, uh, sur des, pro des projets importants comme ça, il y a toujours ce qu'on appelle le 1%. 1% of the theoretical project is uh, devoted to art. So that's a requirement of the uh, provincial government. So a part of the project budget is reinvested in public art that's supposed to be integrated into architecture. So we wanted it to help uh, develop the identity of the uh, uh, courtyard uh, devoted for the students. So the architectural interventions that are contemporary are fairly shy in this project, but we do have that spinal cord and the processing, the, the treatment of the ceilings, and a lot of uh, subtle items that talk about today's aesthetic and uh, interest in, in space. This is the dining space that we just saw, preservation of the old stairs, and the, uh, the experience of the uh, main cooking spaces. Ce projet-là a été suivi par un autre projet qu'on a réalisé pour la ville de Montréal, qui était justement de, de développer euh, avec les gens du quartier euh, la réappropriation des, des ruelles et des terrains adjacents euh, avec le groupe Quartier 21, Peter McGill. So the, this project followed, we followed the first project was this one here that was done for the city. And a lot of the work was bringing together people from the school boards and from the city to, to talk about land sharing and to uh, open up, eliminate fences, and open up the schoolyard to the people of the neighborhood. This neighborhood is actually one of the high, higher density neighborhoods in Canada, along with a few other neighborhoods in, in Vancouver. So there was a great need for, for vegetation. And uh, uh, it's, these are modest projects. It's about bringing greenery. Uh, what was interesting is that they were largely funded by uh, Santé Canada, uh, Health Canada, and uh, similar organizations from Quebec City that are concerned about health. Puis il fallait réduire les îlots de chaleur, hein, parce que tout, tout, tout cet asphalte, asphalte, that's a pretty universal wor word, eh? asphalte and cement, le béton, rend les, les villes trop chaudes et euh, l'idée de, de, de rendre les surfaces perméables et de pouvoir retourner 70% de l'eau à la terre, euh, c'est la première stratégie à développer pour réduire les îlots de chaleur dans, dans les milieux euh, urbains, densément peuplés. So, uh, so we created a green lane 
and green yarn and promoted the sharing of the yard. Both these projects won different prizes in the city of Montreal or recently. But now we arrive to our biggest restoration project, the intervention on the Montreal City Hall that won a North American Copper and Architecture Award uh, last year. Uh, you have here a historical photo of, of the, the reconstruction of the Montreal City Hall in 1923. This is what the project looks like today. It's a project that started for us in 2008 and was only completed, in fact, in 2012. Uh, no, I'm sorry, let me, let me be more precise. The construction started in 2008 and lasted three years, but in fact, the project for us architects, the study started in November of 2003. Alors c'est un projet de, de longue haleine qui demande beaucoup de préparation. Hein? On ne s'improvise pas dans des projets comme ça très rapidement. Euh, le bâtiment d'origine date de 1878. C'est le premier projet euh, dévoué à les fonctions euh, spécifiques d'un hôtel de ville en Amérique du, du Nord. Euh, Mais bon, ce projet-ci date de 1923. Ce n'est pas le projet d'origine. This is the original building, the project of uh, 1872, uh, built by the architects Hutchinson and Perrault, a Second uh, Empire-style building, a beautiful building that you'll notice perhaps that the lower part of the building looks a lot like today's building. Well, in 1922, there was a major fire that ravaged the building, and this was all that was left. Uh, the project was rebuilt, 1923, 24, and there hadn't been any major reconstruction projects since, except for, you know, opening up light wells in the roof and certain types of intervention. A very elegant Beaux-Arts building now replaces the original building, and all of this is beautiful when you look at it from a certain distance, the color of copper, being so beautiful, but a closer survey of this building revealed that, you know, a lot of pieces were, were falling off. Le bâtiment perdait ses dents, perdait ses écailles qui balottaient au vent, et euh, la membrane de cuivre euh, déchirait de par la force du vent par endroit. Euh, il y avait plein de, de marques hein, partout, vraiment, il n'y avait pas grand-chose à faire pour sauver ça. There was no other solution than to redo all of the copper. And uh, for that, we had to really study carefully all of the original details that we could find. We had some drawings, beautiful drawings, uh, but we had to rethink all of the details to make it, uh, to try to uh, not replicate some of the mistakes that we had seen in the, uh, in our uh, observations and measurements. So we also wanted to make our drawings as didactic as possible so that people could uh, understand the assemblies. We also wanted to bring together uh, photos of our survey, our drawing of the new details, and extracts of the original drawings. On est allé plus loin. Les photos étaient toutes numérotées. On avait des, des tableaux de superficie, des quantités. Mais on avait aussi uh, des DVD, DVD that came along with that, summarized all the information, in order to be able to to achieve a, uh, a real historical uh, restoration of the building. It was a lot of work and uh, uh, we needed rigorous documents to be able to achieve this, not to lose control because not too many people can do this anymore. Um, les morceaux, il euh, y a eu un échantillonnage serré hein, pour pouvoir reproduire ça. C'est vraiment spécialisé ça comme travail. C'est très différent de, de notre autre travail. Mais c'est intéressant quand même que la rigueur de ça euh, amène un peu de rigueur dans notre travail de tous les jours lorsqu'on fait de l'architecture contemporaine. So, extracting original pieces, uh, devising with the craftsmen's different strategies to reproduce them. In, um, a lot of this work was done actually in Toronto, uh, chez Heather and Little. Alors, l'assemblage, des morceaux, la formation, Les mises sur place. We had someone full-time throughout construction to make sure that the uh, quality was there. 
So we have here examples of the original details. Things were not always built as per original drawings. So that was one of the big issues that we had to, to address with the Ministry of Culture through photos and through uh, a study of uh, the literature also. And it, did, uh, it, did, uh, it was confirmed in writing that a lot of things had been edited out by the uh, review committee that was composed of uh, famous uh, Montreal architects at the time. They wanted the project to be a... Uh, to reduce a bit its ornamentation, and uh, and it's uh, well, the result is is quite appealing. So there was a lot of interpretation that that had to be done in order before we could achieve this. C'est de toute beauté, vraiment une très grande qualité uh, artisanale à travers différentes techniques de travail du cuivre, comme vous pouvez imaginer, hein, le cuivre repoussé, les moules. Le cuivre martelé, so, you know, they worked with molds, they had to mold the original pieces to be able to press a lot of the copper, but also work with hammers, work with different st uh, strategies to recreate these pieces. Quality control is really important. The tower itself was a real problem and we had suggested it was finally followed to uh, cut it and to take it down in order to, uh, on the, 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 the end of the tower, the spiral. To, uh, to be able to reconstitute all of its pieces because we're so high. On était tellement élevé. Alors, euh, les dessins étaient terriblement détaillés. Vraiment, euh, on, on avait le mandat pour ça. Hein? Et c'est ce que c'était avant. And this is what it became. Le réaccrochage de la tour. Le travail fini. We had to consider also, uh, we had to coordinate the uh, new lighting that was put into place also. But a beautiful project. That also brings us back to stone, eh? because uh, a lot of the copper had to be installed on the stone. So, see, I, I do a lot of this too. How do you repair these old stones? But that's a, quite a big and heavy discussion that perhaps I won't get too much into tonight. But uh, when, obviously, when, when buildings go through such a major fire, in the, Mar in the months of uh, March <laughs> in 1922, uh, you could imagine what the impact on the long term is on the masonry. So there was a lot of stuff to, that needed fixing to be addressed. And maybe what would be interesting to say is that there's just so much we can do when we try to repair old buildings. And we have to take, uh, at some point, a, an ethical decision on deciding what has to be replaced and what can be repaired and uh, certain pieces have to complete their, their life and be eventually replaced, and it's to no avail to try to repair them. Other pieces could be repaired, and it's the perennity of the, uh, the building that's at stake. So it's a lot of a judgment call. Beaucoup de détails. Alors, uh, here I am reviewing with the... Uh, with the uh, Masons uh, areas that we decided we would re repair because they were over uh, circulation areas on the ground level and uh, some of these elements had to be totally replaced, others had to be uh, resurfaced, resurfaced, reinforced. So, you know, the, a lot of the work is perhaps what more, more, a lot of people are comfortable with, with cement. Cement, où on, le ciment, où on fait le, des renforts avant de faire la restauration avec des mortiers spécialisés. Alors ici on voit uh, the, uh, the chimneys, the chimneys had to be uh, taken apart and reassembled. Uh, on a réalisé qu'il a fallu remplacer les structures en acier. These, these are elements of, of restoration that are quite interesting. You know, how much of this can be repaired, how much of it has to be replaced. The reality is you have to open up and put your nose on it and you'll, you'll eventually size up what the problem is. And, uh, and address it. So it's projects that require a lot of care, a lot of attention, and a lot of judgment in the end. We could see uh, some of the stones that were replaced on the, the old chimneys. Yeah, I guess what's interesting to say here is that it, it, it is teamwork. You have to bring together a lot of people. You have to convince people to work well. You have to uh, get them to love their work and love what it is they're doing. And when, when you move that way, uh, it, it's quite interesting. There, there's an interesting dynamic and there's an interesting coming together of a beautiful project. 
Ça ne veut pas dire que les projets n'ont pas leurs complications administratives et politiques ou interpersonnelles, mais euh, le travail s'est bien fait. Puis on avait vraiment un beau groupe euh, d'artisans sur place. This is the city of Montreal. And this is just a picture of a, a modern restoration. This, this modernist tower was all cement, cement panels, but was taking in a lot of water. Uh, part of it's through the windows, part of it's through uh, uh, bad detailing of the vapor barriers. Eh? Early, early modernity did not deal with uh, construction science the same way we do today. So uh, a lot of it was experimental. And in this project, we had to take down a lot of the cement panels and rebuild the envelope. But uh, I guess I just wanted to keep this picture here because it's a beautiful example of a uh, modern building restoration, which is perhaps something that's relatively, uh, an idea that's relatively new in a lot of uh, municipalities. Uh, a lot of the uh, modern buildings uh, we feel we could intervene on we can transform, we can demolish, because they don't have that much value unless they become vintage, but uh, <laughs> which is starting to happen. But uh, all that to say that it, it, as an architect coming from Montreal, practicing in Montreal, coming from Sudbury, practicing in Montreal, I think all buildings have their personalities, have their presence. And as an architect, we have to be careful how we intervene on them, how we strip them from their original value and to give them uh, uh, the flavor of the day, you know, what is the flavor of the day, the color, the color of the year, what's trendy? Well, all of that is fundamental. It's, it's interesting to be trendy, but you also have to uh, uh, dialogue, establish a dialogue with the building you're intervening on and uh, try to see if there's something uh, worth carrying further. further into the territory. Um, C'est vrai qu'on est diversifié. On regarde beaucoup aussi le design urbain. Uh, un bel exemple de nos, un de nos, pro, de nos études les plus grandes, c'était uh, uh, un projet d'étude pour la municipalité de Valleyfield. This is one of our bigger urban design projects, the city of Valleyfield, which is just around here. This is the St. Lawrence Seaway the island of Montreal, the island of Laval. Uh, there's a lot of different seaways and canals, and it all comes to a point here. Valleyfield is bien connu pour ses regades, ses courses de bateau, je sais pas, you know, it has its speed boat races every, every year. It's an international boat race event, and it's really close to the water. Valleyfield s'est développé avec euh, ses usines de textile, euh, avec une main d'œuvre ouvrière très forte. Ça a été vraiment euh, un endroit où euh, le mouvement syndical s'est développé avec beaucoup de force. Et lorsqu'on visite Valleyfield, c'est l'horizontalité, la, la proximité de l'eau, de ces grandes étendues qui nous surprend. C'est vraiment un, un endroit euh, très puissant. I was saying that what Valleyfield has similar to Sudbury is its development of a uh, blue-collar workforce with the textile industry and very strong syndicates. So it's, it was interesting to meet these people because the city council and a lot of people there were used to sharing, talking, deciding, getting things to move together as opposed to uh, dealing with individuals. And this is where the downtown area of Valleyfield is, in the uh, junction of these, the river, these canals, the island, and the downtown area being at the conjunction of both these ellipses, ce qu'on appelait la boucle verte et la boucle bleue. Uh, we call that the uh, two, uh, two uh, how would you say that, two circles, the two ellipses, the, the green ellipse and the blue ellipse. And the idea was that that would be the fundamental idea that would bring together the, uh, our master vision of the, uh, the development and the consolidation of the downtown area of Valleyfield. So the ideas were really fundamental. It's just creating, giving more green space, ensuring a continuity in the promenade, uh, 
uh, reducing areas with vast parking lots, uh, examining local circulation, eliminating uh, perpendicular parking in the downtown area, uh, giving more spaces to sidewalks and tree plantation, restructuring uh, public space so that it could receive more generously the uh, pedestrians and the cyclists. Et, uh, prendre ce plan-là, l'élaborer dans le temps, afin de, de mettre ça en marche. And the, the city has started putting the parts of this project, the short term anyways, in, in place, and have uh, widened streets and created uh, planting trees. I think the first phase was 150 trees or so. And uh, started uh, putting in the uh, uh, cycling paths. So it's starting to occur. Alors, uh, it's really uh, ABC. I guess this applies to Sudbury. <laughs> a lot of these preoccupations applies to Sudbury. Um, you know, identifying more strongly pedestrian walkways, uh, giving more walkway to the pedestrian, reducing the, impl the, uh, the, the importance of trees, encouraging terraces through municipal strategies, and getting the plantations in, in order to to reinforce identity. On est derrière l'hôtel de ville. Alors l'idée ici, c'était de renforcer l'événement uh, du marché public. Huh? The uh, farmer's market, this was their area of the farmer's market, so the idea was to give them an old building here and convert that into the permanent residence. Sound familiar? <laughs> so it was uh, some of these really, really basic ideas to create a good, strong urban space the event of Infontaine, a grand espace vert, uh, reducing the circulation here, the double circulation to create a large park. Tout ça pour mieux accueillir les visiteurs des régades. Ce qui me ramène finalement à my political commentary for tonight, which is interesting, eh? Uh, John Soule writes in one of his books, we need an all-round vision that can be inclusive a circular approach to thinking versus a straight-ahead vision of modern thought. We must step away from the conquering, owning ways of thought and move towards seeing ourselves as part of the place. All of this is contained in the idea that you are reconciled to the place and to the other by the widening of a circle. Well, it's very well said because it deals, phys it deals with place in the physical term. It deals with architectural form, but it also deals about uh, interpersonal relationships and the notions that architecture is not a linear process or is not a cross. Architecture is perhaps more about this. We did different studies in Montreal. We did a lot of charrettes that processed ideas on how do we recreate places, historical plazas. Uh, here for La Place d'Armes, whoops, La Place d'Armes à Montréal, uh, a lot of our ideas were actually adopted by the city and implemented by other architects, but, you know, we, we participated and shared the ideas, and it's interesting to see how a lot of this found its way into the final version de La Place d'Armes. So the circle of inclusion, consultation, bringing people together and not working in silos. On travaillait ensemble pour pouvoir développer des beaux projets. Ça demande beaucoup de patience, beaucoup d'énergie. Alors, la forme circulaire, c'est une métaphore en quelque sorte, hein? mais ici, on la retrouve, la métaphore. On... C'est notre proposition pour l'aménagement du square des Frères Charon. Cette place publique est devenue un square. Cette place publique euh, avait accueilli jadis un moulin installé par les frères Charon à l'extérieur des fortifications de, de Ville-Marie, du de, de lieu de fondation du Vieux-Montréal. So this is mid-17th century when it was developed, the flour mill, to attract a population just outside on the outskirts of what was uh, the original old city of Montreal. Uh, but this project was more than that. It was public space, but it was also a puits d'accès, an access of, a, of many stories down into the depths of the earth to a pumping station for the grey waters of the city of Montreal that were being pumped further east to a collecting uh, uh, centre. 
So, ce projet-là a été justifié justement par les grands besoins techniques de la station de pompage, qui est une incroyable euh, installation souterraine. Et euh, l'étude euh, des documents et de l'histoire ont guidé ce projet-là, qui, qui a eu aussi une... Euh, euh, qui a été soumis pour participation, pour, pour consultation publique et consultation près du ministère. Alors, on voit ici le Square des Frères Charon. This is Old Montreal. It's just on the western limit of Old Montreal, McGill Avenue. L'Université McGill, plus loin, vers le nord. And uh, uh, you see the state of the park, which was really treated like a technical remnant uh, and a lot of the work was just convincing the engineers to try to demolish this stuff and try to put it back underground uh, working with the archaeologists also to uh, see how much we could intervene and uh, finally it was decided that a lot of the artifacts had to be left in place uh, under a geotextile uh, membrane but everywhere where we had to dig the archaeologists were there before us because this is one of the founding places of uh, Of, of Canada in the end, uh, when the first uh, uh, Indians arrived uh, 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 in this area of Montreal. This is where they all converged on the uh, shore of the St. Lawrence, and this is where the first Frenchmen arrived also. Alors, on voit les lieux avant, pendant, et après. This circle here marks the old windmill and became an inspiration a bit for the, the whole event. One of the big decisions was not widening the park and making it bigger, but creating a park that, ha that picks up on the uh, British typology of the square. Le square étant uh, réellement universel et accessible de tous, de tous les côtés, c'est un espace qui n'est pas uh, privatisé, hein? c'est vraiment accessible pour tous. Alors le moulin, la forme de la circulation, and this is all that remains of the um, technical uh, installations that had to remain outside of ground. Mais on est allé plus loin. On voulait que ces installations soient réappropriées par les gens, un peu à la façon de, de, des kiosques, et euh, que la toiture puisse servir et que ça devienne un point de repère. We worked with lighting consultants with specialists for plantations and with indus an industrial designer. We modified the traditional bench of Montreal to double it up and with the uh, industrial designer to develop a fountain that when you approached it, the fountain, you, you could drink from it. <laughs> uh, we worked with uh, people from museology to uh, device and interpretation panels and set that up on, on top here in order so that people can understand a bit better the history. And the, the uh, plantations were developed from the, pro the idea of the wetlands that dominated this part of the city, this part of the territory before the city was built. Avec l'éclairage, on voit que le jardin devient un jardin chromatique qui se transforme lorsqu'il fait noir. Alors on voit ici euh, les éléments, les supports qu'on a développés ici en collaboration avec le, 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 le designer industriel, afin de euh, finaliser ce projet-là, qui, qui était vraiment bien apprécié au Québec, euh, reçu différents prix. And uh, how am I doing in terms of time? This went quickly, eh? Excellent. Well, this is my last slide. <laughs> it seems to me that it went quickly. So uh, that, that last project is interesting because it brings really people from different fields together. Uh, what's interesting that I didn't say, I forgot to say, was that we also had an artist. You know, we spoke about the 1%, the 1% of the budget that's generally given to an artist through a selection process in order to develop a work of art that's integrated to the architecture. So it could be a sculpture that you park somewhere, something that you try to blend into the architecture. But here, uh, for the very first time, uh, the artist was invited not to create his or her work of art, Raphael de, de Groot, was invited to sit with us around the table 
and to help produce, take decisions, and decide in which way the, uh, the project would develop. Uh, as an equal with the uh, landscape architect, the architect and the uh, uh, lighting consultants and everyone. So she was in on the design team from A to Z. Whoops. So which brings me to back to the spiral and back to the idea that beyond these categories, uh, uh, the making of projects is our dealing with... The making of a project is our contribution of our, of our presence into the city. So we, we deal with history, we deal with materials, we bring a lot of artifacts together, we, we build culture. But in the end, what is left is, is what is there today, which is a bit of our own presence and our understanding of, of culture. So reality is not the passing of things in the mirror, like clouds in the sky, it's pure potential, essentially unknowable, which is symbolized by the center of the whirlpool. Thank you.